All right, it's chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. This is a nice one. It is an FLL120MK. Um, it's a gas fet, uh, gallium arsenide uh, field effect transistor, gas fet. So gallium arsenide can operate super fast. So this is a gigahertz device. It operates up to two gigahertz. And um, silicon has a hard time operating there. At least it did in the old days. And uh, these gallium arsenide devices can be built very robustly. So this is a, a 10 watt device. So it's a pretty healthy uh, power transistor. Um, let's see here. So when you read these data sheets, it's going to be in the language that RF engineers talk. RF engineers never use, use the word watts. <laughs> well, I guess they do, but um, usually for heat and not for um, uh, the actual RF. So the RF is, is here at 40, uh, plus 40 dBm, which is 10 watts. The gain of this thing is 10 dB, which means it's a times 10 uh, amplification. And then there's something called PAE, high PAE, and that's power added efficiency. I don't know what that, what this, I don't know what it means, but it's basically how efficient is it from power in to power out. And uh, this is a 40%, 40% efficient device. All right, um, let's see here. It is a depletion mode mess fet. So, I forget what MESS stands for, metal uh, semiconductor, I don't know, M-E-S-F-E-T. I guess I should have studied this before I, before I did chip of the day, but <laughs> it's a depletion mode MESS that. Um, so let's look at some specifications. Uh, it can operate up to 15 volts. Uh, it can uh, dissipate, the package can dissipate 37.5 watts. Um, and it can handle uh, typically four, four amps of electrical current. So yeah, four amps is a lot. And then uh, here it says plus 40 dBm is the P1dB. What is P1dB? That means it's the power where the linearity of the device drops by one decibel. Um, and so, yeah, this is all kind of RF typey stuff. But generally, if you have a graph, well, there's a graph in here. Well, let's show you a graph. Here's a graph. Okay, so graph is, here's input power and output power. So if you put in a certain number of watts, you'll get out a certain number of watts. Here I've highlighted in yellow, if you put in one watt, you get out 10 watts. And you can see that the device is very linear, right? This is a straight line here. But then it starts to roll off. And the place where it rolls off 1 dB from where it should be. It sh this, sh this should continue out to be a straight line, but it's got this little bitty roll off. And when it rolls off one dB, you call that the one dB power, power point, All right? And that's specified at 40 dBm. And here's a graph of the efficiency. So the efficiency of the transistor gets better as you have more power through the device. It's just more efficient that way. All right, so this is an interesting graph. Um, it's it's um, enhancement mode, right? And uh, I mean, depletion mode. Enhancement mode means you need to put in voltage to make it go. Depletion mode means it's already going. You need to put in power to make it stop. And so here we're going to, if we don't do anything at all, if the gate to source voltage is zero volts, then this thing will just conduct its full uh, four amps. But if you put negative one volt across the gate, then instead of it passing four amps, it'll only pass two amps, only half of, half of the power will go through, right? And so um, that's probably about where we want to operate the device, somewhere around in here, uh, probably right around negative one volts is where you want to bias this thing. And then uh, the, the uh, input power will go up and down and uh, the uh, current will go up and down, so it'll be a load line, if that makes sense to anybody who's designed amplifiers before. Okay. Um, Anything else in the data sheet? There's some Smith charts for uh, how you would have to, uh, you would need to have a, an L and a C to make it 50 ohms um, from where you start out. You're starting out with, uh, with uh, you know, too much capacitance up here. You need to bring it down. And um, yeah, and here's the package. Got two little tabs, then it's got these uh, big wings on it for the uh, heat sinking, all right? So the gate is one, 
the drain is three and then the source is the flange okay and so the source so if we draw if we draw an FET okay the source is always going to be ground all right and uh, then we will have the power uh, power going through the uh, eight to drain it'll be going this away all right so here's a device in a circuit um, there's the two power tabs which should have a screw uh, you can see the remnants of the marks on the tab there where there was a screw but they're missing right now I need to find some screws uh, but uh, yeah there's a tab on that side and a tab on that side so you can have the uh, um, microstrip uh, transmission line uh, contiguous through the whole system and uh, the uh, DC bias is provided on one side uh, through these little inductor things here uh, but yeah there you go that's what it looks like in the circuit so remember the device is a uh, depletion mode so you need to pinch it off otherwise it's on full throttle so you need to pinch it off and you need to set it somewhere in its happy place where it's going to modulate up and down from then you set it in some type of uh, almost like a class a amplifier it's on a little bit all the time and you do that with these uh, potentiometers here uh, you set the uh, the uh, gate to source voltage it's a negative voltage so you'll set something around around negative two volts uh, to bias uh, to bias these transistors on so this is the adjustment on on each transistor here all right so i showed you the um the part in the circuit now this particular amplifier that i'm looking at has a as a separate device we'll give you a bonus tip of the day so the bonus tip of the day is going to be an ffl55 uh, MK. So we had a 120. This is a 5.5. Five. The 120 was 10 watts. The 5.5 five is 5.3 watts. Um, so maybe that one they were thinking was going to be 12 watts and this one was going to be 5.5 watts. But once they characterized it, that one ended up being 10 watts and this one ended up being 5.3 watts. But anyway, that's, that's what we got. So this is the only data sheet that I could find. Um, and this was just a photograph of somebody selling these things on eBay for 70 bucks um, so it's a 10 volt device um, you need to have about 0.86 volts negative to in it to get it to its operating point we looked at the data sheet on the other one it was about minus one volt here's about 0.88 volts something like that frequency was 2.3 volts under this test conditions um, and they were getting um, a gain of 11 db at about 5.3 watts and it was operating at one one amp the other one was operating at uh, four amps this one operates at one amp okay so basically the same thing only the, the little brother all right so in this amplifier um, it goes through a low power section and then a high power section here's the low power section and this the ff fll 55 here so this is like a five volt a five watt device and then it's going to go through these uh, 10 watt devices uh, there's two of those and then it's going to go through four more of them so 10 watt 10 watt 10 watt 10 watts and the output of this thing is specified as 30 watts so it's it's uh, over over engineered right so you have capability of 40 watts and you're only using 30 watts of that so it sounds like a great design now you might lose some power getting to the output so it's specified at 30 watts in the output so these might actually be running at uh, 40 watts um, and then you lose a bit until you get to the output but I'm, i would have guessed maybe you're operating at 35 watts here and you lose maybe five watts get to the output something like that anyway so that was tip of the day and fll 120 mk